Hey, what's up everybody? So, much anticipated the arrival of the Microsoft Surface Pro 4 tablet. Uh, this was launched uh, just recently um, this year. Actually, it was back in October, I believe, October 26th, around that time, that this lovely little invention came out. This is the success to the Surface Pro 3, which I was pretty much blown away with. I mean, the 3 was, was impressive. Um, what I found that Microsoft has done with this model, they've taken the feedback from their consumers on, you know, their pros and cons of the 3, and they've made, you know, the improvements on all the cons, and we have the even more improved Surface Pro 4. So, let's dig a little bit into details on this cool device. So, first off, what looks different on this when compared to the 3? The pen actually attaches itself to the side of the tablet via a magnet. So this is the new Surface Pen. Um, this pen is backward compatible with the Surface Pro 3 as well, and it also sticks to the side, just like it does on the Surface Pro 4. Um, so let's look at this pen for a second. So a couple of features. Uh, the top is actually a real eraser. It actually is a rubber eraser, but it also doubles as a button that you can press. Um, and then there are a couple of modes um, that you can use this button for as well. Um, and uh, of course here you have your little clip that you can clip into your, your pocket or into your, into your bag or your sleeve or wherever. And then on the back here, there's a little LED. It's really hard to see, but when it lights up you will see it. Um, and then the magnetic strip is along here. And then at the very bottom of the strip, it doubles as a, a, a right click button as well, which is very nice. And then we have the tip. Um, I will do an in-depth video just on this stylus, uh, comparing it to the Service Pro 3 stylus in another video, but just wanted to give you the overview of what the improved stylus looks like. Now, when the uh, LED is in pairing mode, the LED will glow white. And when the battery is low in this and it needs to be um, uh, replaced, the LED, of course, will glow red. So what I like about this um, button, it actually has four functions built into this button. Um, so again, I mean, the, the surface is nice and rubbery, like a really razor. But uh, the first function, obviously, is when you're writing uh, using OneNote, for example, or any um, uh, writing application, you can actually use this to erase whatever you've done on the screen. That's one. Um, and then when it comes to pressing, if you just press quick, uh, just give the button one press, it will automatically bring up the OneNote app. And what I like about that is that even with the screen is locked and you need to take a quick jot down a quick note, you can still press the button once and you can still get access to the OneNote app, uh, which is very nice. And then when you do two clicks, whatever is on the screen, it will take a screenshot of that and import that into OneNote, which is uh, really good as well. And if you hold down the button, Cortana will be summoned to uh, do whatever you wish, right? So, you know, so a quick recap, one click, you open OneNote, uh, two clicks, it takes a screenshot, ports the screenshot into OneNote, and then if you hold down the button, you get Cortana to uh, deactivate it, and then she, you know, you can give her whatever command you have for her. Now, uh, the tips are replaceable, and the tips also are compatible with the pound block technology and multipoint technology. So all that pretty much means is you can you know, comfortably have your hand on the screen, like your, your palm, resting them on the screen, and you can write like you're writing on a normal pen, pad and pen, and you know, you can write comfortably. So kudos to the pen. And what I really love, that little magnetic strip that can attach to the side, it's a huge, huge bonus. That's a you know, you know I, I know of people that have actually misplaced their Surface Pen uh, from the Surface Pro 3 times, days, um, because they just leave it lying around. Uh, because, let me ask you a question, how often would you lose your regular pens, right? You, they fall on behind the couch, um, and you, you, know, you lend somebody your pen, and then they don't bring it back. So, you know, <laughs> that's why it's so easy to lose one of these, and these are not cheap, they're expensive, right? So this, really is a, a, a a savings on your wallet and uh, pretty much just you know it's it's not it's very convenient um, right so that's the pen now the surface pro has a unibody magnesium casting 
which is you know, very professional looking and uh, very sleek. Now, for anybody who has a Surface Pro 3, will notice that in the 4, uh, as opposed to having the word Surface on the bottom now, you have the Windows logo here, um, which is, um, the, you know, once you have this logo, you know for sure you have the Surface 4. Now, as far as the physical dimensions, they are identically the same as the 3. However, what they've done, the screen size itself, on the 3, the screen size diagonally was about 12 inches. So you have an additional 0.3 of an inch um, um, stretch on, on the new Surface 4. So it's, the screen is a bit bigger. And if you ask yourself, well, how, how could they have physically the same dimensions of the 3 but a bigger screen? Well, what you've noticed is that the Windows soft button that you would normally find uh, here in the bottom of your, your screen uh, on your Surface 3, they've removed that um, soft key. So with that being said now, you can stretch out the screen a bit more, have a smaller bezel um, and you know, a richer viewing experience. And yeah, to be honest, by removing that soft key or uh, more technically, it's more technically known as the capacitated Windows button that you would form, find at the bottom. You know, it, you know, I mean, it doesn't sound like a huge difference, like 0.3 of an inch, but going from 12 to 12.3 inches in, in, uh, as a diagonal extension, really do, you do notice that the screen is much larger. Now, the Surface 4 is a little bit slimmer, so it has been working out on the treadmill. Um, the earlier model, the 3, have, has a, a 9.1 millimeter um, thickness. This one is actually reduced by 0.7 of a millimeter down to 8.4 millimeters. Um, now, obviously, you know the USB 3.0 port is there, so because of that port, um, which is well needed, um, it can't get any smaller than that. Um, and there is still enough space in there as well for the internal processors. Uh, you know, there's still some breathing room in there for the processors as well, uh, which is pretty cool. Now, Microsoft, they've, they've spent a lot of R&D in their screen, I must say. I mean, for example, what they've done, they've actually crammed the sensors, diodes, you know, pixels, everything, all that screen technology is actually closer to the glass. And because of that, they were able to shave off uh, that you know 0.7 of, of a millimeter in, in, in thickness right and um, you know it that's that's really cool what are the benefits of cramming more of that technology close to the glass well for one the screen is much more responsive to touch um, I, I can, I'm barely touching this and the screen you know, it reacts to my touch very very well um, which is I love this that's very fluid um, and um, there's also a um, 1,024 levels of pressure that this screen can detect um, when you're writing. So the harder you write, the thicker the lines. And with Pixel Sense technology as well, this tablet can actually tell if either my finger is touching uh, this or if my stylus is touching it. Right? Um, and you know, it's it's not just how many pixels you can cram into a screen and the resolution. And whatnot it's the fact that you can have a very rich realistic screen um, interactive experience you know whether you use your, your pen or you're using your thumb or your finger to, to move around and navigate um, they put a lot of work in making that seamless making the device more smarter right knowing okay it's a hand that's using it's, it's trying to navigate so let me make the navigation you know uh, fluid or yeah he wants to write down some some information he's using his stylus um, doing some math you know it just makes the experience much more richer um, right very simple now the surface pro 4 um, like okay let's look at the older the surface pro 3 the, the, the resolution on that was 2160 times 1440 or 216 pixels per inch on the Surface Pro 4, you actually get 2736 pixels times 1824 pixels. That equates to roughly 267 pixels per inch, all right? So remember, on the Surface 3, we have 216 pixels per inch. This has 267 pixels per inch, all right? So they've squeezed a lot more pixels uh, within, that, within that same surface area. Now look at this, the, the MacBook Air, uh, the 13 inch version has 128 pixels per inch, right? And even the iPad Pro that recently launched, um, of course, yeah, the iPad Pro 
is about 0.6 inches bigger in terms of screen size, measured in at 12.9 inches, while this is 12.3 inches. However, the iPad Pro only has 264 pixels per inch, while this has 267. This has three more extra pixels uh, in, in there, right? So the, the resolution, especially when you look at movies like this, it's, it, it's crisper and um, it, it's much better, I, I must say. Um, you know, and, and looking at this, I mean, the screen, it, it's crisper, uh, the images are brighter, and it's even more accurate. And, and, and as far as the color palettes are concerned, the color palettes are even more accurate. So kudos to Microsoft for really putting some more effort into making the screen viewing experience ex an exceptional one. Now the Surface Pro 4 comes with a 3 to 2 aspect ratio and all that simply means the aspect ratio is the relationship between the width and the height of the screen and with the 3 to 2 ratio um, we're compared to the older conventional 4 to 3 um, uh, um, ratios like for the old fashioned TVs it pretty much means that you know with this configuration you get a wider um, and, and shorter um, uh, shape um, when compared to a 4-3 uh, ratio and it's slightly narrower than, narrower than the 16 uh, to 9 ratios, right? So you get the best of both worlds where you can, you know, watch movies or play video games or just do, you know, basic work or if you're going to be then, you know, using it to, to take notes or stuff and stuff like that, right? As a note taker, right? Or as a book. Or if, and, and what I love about the 3 to 2 aspect ratio is you know, you get the best of both worlds, uh, where you can get, you know, a good viewing experience for watching movies and whatnot. And it's ideal for if you uh, want to turn this into a notepad, uh, if you're going to be doing writing and taking notes. Um, and as you can see, using this pen uh, on the screen uh, with this type of surface area, um, it, it, it feels like I am really using a real notepad. Thank you.